Okay, so now that we hopefully understand what cross-site request forgery is, we're now going to build a class which allows us to quickly and easily uh, protect against cross-site request forgery. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually look at the markup and understand what we actually need to do to be able to send the token. Now, as we've previously looked, we need another input field with a hidden uh, value and this is going to represent the token that we want to send to the server. So let's go ahead and just factor this into what we already have here. Now all that we really have is a, a standard document markup, a form, uh, a field here, um, and a submit button and a hidden field that represents the product ID. So this isn't too complicated, it's just a, a standard form that you, you might submit. And this could be anything, as long as it performs an action on the user's behalf, it's worth protecting against with cross-site request forgery protection, uh, i.e. the token that we're going to be generating. So we have a hidden input type here, and the name of this is going to be token. This can be called anything you like, it doesn't have to be called token. And we're going to be putting the token just in here. But let's ignore that for now because we don't have an, the ability to generate a random enough token yet. So let's go ahead and look at what we need to do inside of token.php um, and also what we need to do in index.php in order to actually use this. So probably the first good idea would be to start sessions so we can use session data in PHP or we can actually store data uh, within a session. So basically, um, we just use the session start function uh, to initialize uh, sessions, have the ability to use these on the page because we're going to be storing the token that's generated on each refresh in a session. Now we also wanna go ahead and require in the class that we're going to be building. So this is token.php and I have placed this inside of a classes folder here. That's just located there. So this will be classes forward slash token.php. Now this is going to be a static, well we're going to have static methods to this class just to make it a little bit easier to work with. But if you haven't worked with object oriented programming, these just work like functions really. We just reference them under the token class name. So you'll get to see a little bit more how we deal with this. Now initially what we might want to do is we might want to check if a quantity has been submitted and a product has been submitted and eventually we'll want to check if a token's been submitted. So we might want a little if statement here with an is set in just to check if we have submitted this data correctly. So this is going to be post data and the first is going to be the quantity. So the quantity here is the name of this field. So we definitely require a quantity. Now this doesn't actually validate the quantity, it doesn't check if it's numeric or anything like that. We're not interested in that for now, uh, that's uh, you know a whole other explanation. Uh, sorry, post. We also want to go ahead and we want to check if the product uh, ID has been specified, so that's product there. And we'll leave the token for now, we'll add this in in just a moment. So let's go ahead and define two new variables, which is product, and that is dollar underscore post product and likewise for the quantity there we are so we've now defined these two and we can go ahead and echo them out do what we want with them um, but we'll go ahead and just check that they're not empty There we go, so these are required fields. Now let's go ahead and just output OK here for now, just so we know that the code that we've written so far works. So all we're doing is checking if this these data set, storing them inside of variables, and then we're checking if they're not empty and outputting OK. So as long as we submit this form correctly, uh, we should be OK. There we are. So all that's missing now is our tokenization of the form and the ability to protect against cross-site request forgery. So what we need to do is we need to build this class. So we use the class keyword and our class is called token. We're gonna have two um, 
methods inside of here and the first one and these are both going to be public and they're static so we can access them using the um, scope resolution operator which we'll look at in a moment it sounds more complicated than it is so we have the ability to generate and we have another method as well and this is going to be the ability to check and to check we need to pass in a token and that's going to be the token that we generate inside of our form and that's going to check it with the token that's uh, been set in a session so that's the token there so for the generate method what do we need to do well this is extremely simple we want to apply um, a randomly generated token to a session and then return it so we can do this all in one line um, so what we'd normally do is we'd say session token and we'd set that to uh, a, a random value so you know for example one two three four five all this is going to do is it's going to place this value inside of this session now we don't want to do that because that's not a random value that's hard-coded so we're going to use um, a function called open SSL random pseudo bytes and we're going to pass in 32 as the length so if we go ahead and uh, and use this now I'll explain a little bit about the options we have in just one moment there we are so this is the function that we're using um, this requires OpenSSL to be installed or installed or, or included as a module uh, in your PHP installation. But you can look around the internet and find other suggestions of how to generate uh, the most random um, characters you can. Um, so, you know, um, it really it depends. I mean, it's good to, to read up on things like this anyway. So uh, this is just something that was recommended to me. So I decided to check it out and use it and feel satisfied that it would generate a random enough character that it provides a good uh, or random enough string that provides a good level of protection. Now what we also need to do is we also need to base64 encode this because otherwise it's going to mess our, our page up. So we use the base64 encode and wrap that in what's returned by the OpenSSL random pseudo bytes function. Now, go ahead and look these up in the PHP manual as well. Read them, understand what they do and how they operate, what they return, um, particularly this one if you're, if you're deciding to use it. And also remember that transferring this functionality to another server might mean that it will break because OpenSSL uh, isn't installed. So you might want to either include a check uh, or use a different method. It's definitely not good enough to perhaps use something like um, MD5 and use the unique ID function in PHP, um, it would provide a level of protection, an acceptable level of protection, but it's generally seen as not random enough for secure applications. So what we also want to do here is we want to return the value that we use whilst we're setting it and, um, and setting the value of this session. So let's go ahead and just play around with this generate uh, method and we're going to apply this to the token value of our form. So let's go ahead and open and close some PHP tags and we want to go here and echo token which is the name of our uh, class. Now notice that we aren't instantiating it. Usually what we would do uh, with a class is we would say something like token equals new token. Now we can actually do this, but there's no need because we've provided a static method here. So all we need to do is use the scope resolution operator and say generate. And that's it. So by calling this method on the token class, what we're doing is we're setting a session and we're returning it at the same time. And that allows us to use the echo construct to actually output this to this uh, page. So let's take a look inside of our browser, um, refresh this page, and check out the form here. So you can see that we've got this randomly generated value as well, but let's also go ahead and modify our code so we can actually output the value of the session. So down here I'm just going to say echo session token. In fact, let's go ahead and do this down here because it won't be available at the top of the page. Um, now what we might want to bear in mind is we might want to set the session 
up here or the logic up here and then output the variable that holds this down here but it doesn't really matter too much to be honest so when I refresh now um, you can see that whatever we have in here matches the actual value of the session so if we compare this which is in on the on the source of the web page that the user has generated or, or been or been uh, brought back from the server to their browser, we can compare this against this value that's actually in a session, um, uh, you know, uh, of the user session. So these two match, so as long as they do match, this form has, or you have a very good idea or a very good indication that this has been submitted by a user. So how do we actually check this? Well, we need to go ahead and uh, fill in, if you like, this check method. Um, and this is relatively straightforward. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing complex about this at all. We need a simple if statement just to basically check, first of all, if this session is set. Um, if the session isn't set, then it's likely being um, sent from somewhere else or the user's deleted the field uh, from the form using a web inspector or something like that. But generally for users, legitimate users, this value should be set and the token that's provided should match the uh, token we've stored in the session. So if I go ahead and use the is set um, construct and say is set session token, so we want the token set. Uh, we want this token value to be set, and then we also want to check if the token. Now remember, we pass in the token that's been submitted by the user. We want this to um, be an exact match for the session, or not an exact match. Sorry, we're using type checking here, uh, which isn't you know strictly necessary, but uh, it, it's it's a nice touch to make sure that you know when using type checking, it's fine. Type checking really is irrelevant here because by generating a random uh, string, um, you're never really going to end up with anything like one, which might be which might be interpreted as tr a true value or something like that. But anyway, we we won't go into that. So if the session has been set and the token that's been provided matches the session token, we can go ahead and return true. But what we also might want to do is we might want to unset the current value that we have inside of our, um, our session super global. So now what we want to do is after this check, we want to go ahead and return false. And that's because if this check uh, or this, um, this, um, this if statement uh, evaluates to false, we want to go ahead and uh, obviously we're not running the block with or the code within the block here. So we just want to by default return false. So now that we have the ability to check the token, we can factor this into our form here to make sure that the token that's been submitted by the user matches. So this is extremely simple. We just need an if statement. And this if statement basically just uses the check method and we want to provide the token that's been submitted by the user. We also want to check that this token has been supplied. So we add this to our is set construct, a uh, list of comma separated values. And then what we do is we can go ahead and pass this into our method. So what's happening now is we are generating the token. When the user submits the form, we store a couple of values which is relevant to what we're talking about really um, and we check if they're not empty uh, we could also check I guess if the tokens not empty but that's not entirely necessary um, and then we use the check method which we've just built here passing in this token that's been submitted and that will check if it matches if it does match we go ahead and OK or in the case of um, our application we go ahead and process an order add something to a cart, post a comment on a website, upload a picture, it, you know, it really doesn't matter. So under quantity, let's go ahead and type in one, and click order, and we have success. We've processed an order. Now let's go ahead and modify this here and change this to something completely different. In fact, let's go ahead and get rid of it first of all. Type in one, click order, nothing happens. So with protected against it in that way. Let's go ahead and now append uh, ABC to the end of this string and go ahead and again try to order a quantity of one and it doesn't work. Um, we arrive back at the state that we would naturally find ourselves in generating a token, setting a session and we order and we can order successfully.
So we've looked at what cross-site request forgery is, how it can affect users, and we've also built an extremely simple class that allows us to quickly inject a randomly generated string and check this and ensure that the form has been uh, legitimately submitted by a user.